Greetings, everyone. My name is Wayne Griffin with Always Reforming Ministries. I am the host of the Theology in Real Life podcast. Thank you for joining us for another episode. This is actually part two of episode four, where I sit down with Michael, a new believer, and we continue to work, work out and live through our discipleship relationship. If you want to learn about discipleship in real life and how you can make disciples and how you can navigate that relationship with someone at your local church or somebody in your life where you can share the gospel with them and, and beyond that, be a part of the life, sacrifice your life, lay it down for them so that they can become disciples of Jesus Christ, follow them and really walk into the calling, the very high calling that Christ sacrificed on the cross accomplished. Enjoy this episode. Like, subscribe, leave some comments to let us know uh, any feedback. We'd be glad to hear from you. God bless. Diving back into, now that was a lot, uh, yes. talking, talking into, into the church that we talked. So you, you mentioned um, how you've seen other brothers and sisters and been encouraged, encouraged to um, continue the fight, to you know, fight for your family and to um, just pursue Christ and grow. Um, over the first, you said we, you know, it's been about 18 months, you know, coming mm -hmm. up on two years of knowing Christ, uh, what has been, um, has there been any challenges and how has Christian community had an impact on that? Um, well, I would say one of the challenges that I would say Christian community has really helped me, uh, kind of grow through would be, uh, and it's kind of, it's kind of unique cause it's, it's just watching it's kind of like an observing of the faithfulness of the men and how they lead their families and mm. and, and you know more loving their wife you know um the more the sensual lust has kind of tampered down good if that make if that yeah. makes sense yeah um, good you know the watching watching these men in our church and you know other christian followers that i see and and uh, the, I don't know why I can't think of his name, but I know him, and I've watched a bunch <laughs> of his videos. Oh, okay. Um, the guy that we watched the other week, Paul Washer. Paul Washer. Yeah. I don't know why, but I know him. I watched his yeah. videos because mm -hmm. he did a very good yeah sermon on being loyal and loving your wife and your family. Sure. And uh, and you know, listen to him and. And and I, I, he's technically part of the church, even if he's a different church. I mean, it's a church. It, we're all we're all one body. Yeah, yeah he's a, he's a uh, like itinerant preacher, and he's a missionary and runs a society. So yeah, he's our brother in yes. Christ. Yeah, you know. So I mean, even even if he's not an immediate impact, yes. you know, physically. Yeah. But what his, what he has talked about in his sermons, you know, has created an impact on me as well as. A different way as I viewed sensual lust, even when I first came to Christ, you know, because at first I didn't think it was that big of a deal, you know. Occasionally I would, I would see a beautiful woman and I'll probably look more than, longer than what I should have. Right. And now it's turned into I just see someone walking and I glance because I'm ADHD, so I can't help but like I see a squirrel, I got to look at it. So right. it doesn't matter. <laughs> I have to at least acknowledge the thing that is there, but yeah. it's not. And, I'm like that too, yeah. You know, I don't just sit there and look, turn and look again. It's just right. kind of like I see and I keep on going on with my business. Like kind of bouncing your eyes. Well, yes. Because you just, I mean, whatever, is a, you just look and then, yeah. Yeah. Which is a challenge and things that, you know, you have boys, right? And so mm -hmm. like thinking about like training them and helping them with that same thing because it's, it's more difficult unless we have like a radical change of like modesty in, the, in, in America, which we could pray for. It, it is more difficult now than, um, than it's ever than been. Ever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially with the phones and access to like everything, you know, you have a, mm -hmm. a brothel in your pro pocket, someone, yeah. someone said once. Um, and that's where really just continuing to kill that sin and, um, and that's regularly um, just doing as much as we can as far as um, doing kind of like the, the holy opposites of like where those struggling, those sins that yeah. we struggle with and studying his word, prayer, pursuing him, um, 
loving your wife, those are all things that are like the holy opposites of yes. of that. And he, he'll provide the grace and, and knowing that like you have brothers you can call on and not going to be like, you know, how could you possibly be struggling with this? But like just text and say, hey, I need prayer because I'm struggling in this area. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's what we're here for. And that's how God has worked this out as far as bearing each other's burdens. And I got there's verses in here that talk about like that obedience. Um, yeah. And, and also, there's there's wisdom through brothers and sisters in Christ that, you know, they there might be just a, a a a way that they say something that kind of makes something make more sense to right. you. You know, it's just you can you can read the Bible all you want, but sometimes the way someone reads it doesn't click in their head as God intends it to be clicked in their head. Right. Sometimes you know it could be. You're just sitting there having a conversation and someone, you know, whether it's sexual morality or you struggle with, um, with, you know, drugs or struggle with lying or struggles with, you know, whatever it could be, you know, yeah. even if it's little white lies, whatever the struggle is, someone could say a piece of wisdom, even though you've read that same, yeah. same portion of the Bible, that same verse, and you're like, I know what it's saying here, but how can I get this to, how, how can I make it make sense? sense to me and yeah. then someone kind of talks to you about it and they kind of give you a, a a viewpoint that that makes it make sense to you yeah that, that mm -hmm. brings it that kind of like lights the light bulb the aha up. moment yeah yeah you and know it's it god's work you could be reading the same the same book of the bible over and over for a year and i do the same thing and there's things that he can teach us um um, not necessarily new truth, but new application for your life and for my life and, um, and how he can just reveal deeper parts of um, the word as we, you know, just continually changing us. Yeah. That's, how the, that's how God, grow, you know, the Holy Spirit, a means of his of growing us and maturing us is through the study uh, of his word. It's just undoubtable. If, if you're not reading and studying your Bible, um, if you're not doing those things, if you're not reading your Bible, uh, it's impossible to grow. Yep. Um, that's just a fact, and so, and that's a kind of a big problem, and um, that was where I was for most, you know, much of, much of my life. Um, obviously, uh, now I know that I was an unbeliever before um, before hearing the gospel, being broken of my sin, and putting my my hope and faith and trust completely in Christ alone, um, and being given a new heart. That's that's where, you know, for for years there was no like uh, interest in those things, but. You know, I still believe myself to be a Christian, but now it's now I can't imagine. You know, now that I desire these things, now it's it's sometimes it's fine. It's hard to find. It can be hard to find the time, and that's why I've just given up trying to find the time and said I'm going to get up earlier. You know, and this is going to be the first thing that I do. And I get distracted, but I make sure that I do. And I've noticed that like it's uh, just asking God to fill us with His Holy Spirit. I mean, that's you know Matthew seven. A lot of uh, of this of this channel is like kind of built upon Matthew seven in a lot of ways. Um, mm -hmm. I focus on the twenty twenty one to twenty three of Matthew seven just because of like my life and being one of those people that Jesus would have said, "I never knew you." Um, that would have been me, and that that just breaks my heart for many people that in this country, American Christianity, that are self deceived. But at the beginning of the verse, it talks about you know asking, um, and 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 when God says that you know when. Jesus talks about um, us, if, if we, you know, if you and I being evil can give, compared to God, right, mm -hmm. can, um, can give good gifts to our children, um, how much more would the Father, God the Father, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask, right? So God uh -huh. is saying, uh, you know, I want to give you, the, I want you to be filled each day with the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit as a seal, right? Yes. But if there's a difference between being fully led. When we say full, it's like not full like as in a cup, right? Um, yeah. Because you have all of the Holy Spirit in the moment that you place your hope and trust in Christ. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, you know, you have him. So at this, but, what, but being full as in like the sail of a boat, right? When the wind completely fills it, yeah. it you're being moved along by the Holy Spirit. Um, so that, that is the difference. Um, that is, that, that's, that's the key. That, that's something that you ask for. That's something that happens... That, that could happen for you new or fresh each day. And it, but if we don't ask God to be uh, f completely filled with his spirit each day, um, it's very unlikely that you will be. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's simple. He says, you need to be asking this. Um, and that's, that's kind of like becomes a part of your life as prayer becomes part of your life as um, that just 
you continue he continues yeah. to mature you and you grow in those areas so i mean even with prayer i mean watching not even just watching him like grow in me or grow right. me i yeah. should say it's seeing how he's growing my children and my wife too right you know it's it's really i get absolutely amazed at bringing prayer in and to my life and bringing more worship in, into my family life, how much more obedient the children become, how much more uh, respectful they become towards, you know, other people and and getting them to fully understand what it means to be, you know, a child of God and, right. to, and to really follow God and, and to love them with all your heart. I mean, I know they're just children, but I also understand that um, I'm very bad at, what um like verse calling like john whatever um oh but, referencing yeah referencing um yeah. but i know it talks about you know having faith like a child uh childlike mm -hmm. faith yeah and and i always you know and looking at the children and just watching them it just it's just a great reminder of how much faith that they carry and and they just they kind of like seem like everything like they just believe it so wholeheartedly watching mm -hmm. their faith and seeing how like just it's just amazing to see children, you know, yeah. and, and, and just how much they believe in so many things and just how excitable they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I, it's definitely hard for me to like fully describe how, but there's just so many changes that, that I've seen in my children and then them just blindly believe that, hey, I can do this because either... My daddy's got me, my mommy's got me, God's got me, you know, like, and, yeah. and they, you know, they just do it, you know, they yeah. just go because they, they fully believe that they're going to be okay. Right. And, and yeah. many instances of confidence and knowing that, that they're going to be okay regardless because God's got them and daddy's got them, you know, mm -hmm. God provided mommy and daddy for me, yeah. you know, and they, they understand that. You know, and it's crazy to think about their faith. You know, they, they have faith that we're going to provide them food, provide mm -hmm. them shelter, provide them unconditional love, yep. and provide them, you know, being teachers and leaders of their lives. And they just follow with great faith. Yeah. You know, and it, it's just, you know, looking at that and it makes you, you know, it's a great reminder as parents that we need to be just as their faith is in us and God. Our mm -hmm. faith needs to be just like that in Him, right? You know, if because if we just go blindly trusting God, God's going to lead us down a path that is going to give you exactly what you need. Yeah, you know, and and it might even lead into you pursuing your own dreams by blindly following God. You know, I just say blindly is and and and. I, and I, I feel like a good reference, you know, because it's just knowing that God's going to do what he's going to do. He's going to make sure, hey, you know, you're going to take this big leap of faith. Right. And you're, you know, like you, you're talking about, well, I'm just going to go, I'm going to figure out what, I'm going to take these steps. Yeah. To go to pick a school, right? Mm -hmm. You're kind of blindly following God, but you're also doing your homework at the same time. Because mm -hmm. God, if you're, Blindly following God, that means you're going to do your homework. Sure. You're going to, if you feel like God's calling you to continue your education on, on, um, on, what is it, counseling? Mm -hmm. You know, God, and you just blindly follow that, follow that, guess what? You're going to take the steps to get to where you, where you feel like God's going to intend you to go. Right. You know, so. Yeah, I think, I think it's like, in a sense, like as far as, like not necessarily the language of like blindly, um, but I know what you mean as far as like, it's really just like you, you have full confidence in what yes. God is doing, right? So mm -hmm. I don't need to know. It's like, well, it's so, so to tie in what you mean by blindly, like Hebrews 11, one says, you know, it's faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a way of saying that we're, we're hoping in things that we do not see. Yes. Right. So that in a sense that, you know, we're blind to the future, 
because um, the future really belongs to the Lord. Um, that's also a, a, in the Bible, um, and that the secret things, right? Those mm -hmm. those things belong to the Lord. So we we but we trust Him now. We trust Him in the future. We trust Him everywhere. So I don't have to. I can confidently move forward and saying, well, I believe that I'm in His will now, and I can. I don't have to know exactly what's going on. So I'm going to continue to do what I believe He's leading me to do now, and just trust that. Um, in the future, but yes, you absolutely have to make st like you know you yes. have to, you have to prepare, you have to make plans, you have to be a good steward. It's like, well, I've given you time, and you're praying about this, but you didn't, you know. And two years from now, it's like, but you didn't do any planning or thinking ahead or yeah. saving or any type of uh, wise counsel from your elders. You know, you submitted yourself to them. You know, you're not getting any counsel from them. That would be unwise because then you it pretty much wouldn't be in God's will the whole yeah. time. But if we, we shouldn't wonder, um, like, and I, I remember someone saying this, but, um, you know, 95% of God's will for our lives is, is found in, in the Word of God. Yes. He's already spoken it. Um, but we're, but most, you hear a lot of Christians talking about that 5%, like, what, are, what is God's will for my life, right? But they, they don't know what the 95% is, and they've, God's already given it to them, you know, because yeah. we don't want to, uh, just, it's to humble ourselves and read his word regularly just do the base we're disobeying by not pursuing him on a regular basis but we want to know what job i should take or what car i should buy or where where should i go to school or like all of these big who should i marry like where's you know can god send me a husband all of these things but you know we're not preparing ourselves to be to be the husband or wife just doing right? Those gifts. right we're not doing right we're not doing anything that it's it's that's where it's if you read God's word, study it, and obey it, you're going to find yourself in the middle of God's word pretty much all the time, you know, 95% yeah. of the time, right? Yeah. It's like you make mistakes, but God's will becomes so much clearer when you're already pursuing him. And because you're reading and studying his word, your, your mind's starting to be renewed and you're starting to slowly develop the mind of Christ. And so your decisions become geared towards, well, what is God, what would, you know, what would, um, what is God's will in this situation? You're, you're seeking to do what He would want you to do, like mm -hmm. the, the heart, the life that you know Him, him indwelling you. You're beginning to change everything, so your decisions start to go towards God's will, just intuitively. But it, you have to be growing, you know, in Christ. You have to be maturing regularly, or else that won't be a part of your life. Yes. Yes. So I know that we talked about like the importance of this. We, you know, we titled this episode. Um, do I really need to join a, a, a church, right? I um, think you should. We, 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 well, it, it's, we, we, that's what it's going to be. So I know we're, we're, we're live here on Twitter. And that's why I titled it there. And, um, and also when I upload this to YouTube, um, do I need to be, that, that's something that could be like a, a multi-parter or maybe we can touch on next week um, some of like what God says specifically about joining a local church. Um, but I think we can make it probably like a part one, part two. I think um, that'd be a good idea. And so to look at some of this, uh, some of the verses that we, so here we have um, um, for our episode four here. Um, and we talked about this, you know, at the ecclesia, of the called out ones, right? That's yeah. what God, when he saves you, you're, you're called out of that, the life that you were in for, uh, for his purposes. And so that's where, when we gather together, it's, we're the, it's a people, right? It's not mm -hmm. the building. Um, we make up the church. We're the body. And Christ is the head. And he's our only, uh, he's the ultimate authority for us. And so this is, this in Acts 2, it talks about, you know, with our topic of, you know, should I join a local church? This is what the early church looked like. So Acts 2, uh, 42 through 47. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And all, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Mm. So we have, um, this is a, a picture of what, this is exact. This is what was ha happening right after um, yeah. after Pentecost, right when um, there was um, many people saved, right? Um, 
and so the church is really just like flourishing, like just like breaking. And so what did they do? They devoted themselves to the uh, to the apostles' teachings, right? So you you can already assume that um, there were people like you had the apostles with them, right? And then some people could have already been. Um, like they already had like an oral tradition going on right before the, you know, the Holy Spirit pens mm -hmm. through these apostles, like the actual and um, the, the word of God. Right. So they're they're already they're already talking about, OK, this, what is the apostles teaching? And so and they also they're sharing meals together and they're also praying. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is this is the pattern for the local church. Right. So we see what do we do? We have. Um, our pastors mm -hmm. te teaching the word of God. We have fellowship, and then we, yeah. we have our you know family meals um, where we go or we go out together, or you know what I'm saying, breaking yeah. of the bread. We have the we do have communion. Yeah. Um, so um, that is this is kind of a pattern. It's not something that's um, um, that is just made up of just you yeah. know men making this up. So like, why do we have these institutions? So. Um, so and then also back then this was a day by day attending the temple together. Of course, there was uh, lots of persecution, right? That was um, that was coming from this. Of course, they just killed, right? They they um, they killed Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So clearly, to say like I'm following this guy is a little bit dangerous. So they were meeting, but day by day. Um, so it's really when you were when you were truly saved like this and added to the church, you knew that, I mean, your, your life was radically different and it was also in danger at the same time. So day by day, attending the temple together, they were, they were in the temple and breaking bread in their homes. Um, uh, they received their fruit, but glad and generous hearts. And so, and they were praising God, um, and the Lord added to their, added to their numbers. Those are being saved. So not, even there, we see that like the Lord added to their number. So there was actually so you had a people like who was a church, mm -hmm. like who were a church, and God continued to add to that. Um, and this is another another benefit, right, of the Christian community and another call, um, brothers. If anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you lest you be tempted. <coughs> Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Um, and that's just a kind of a, it's saying, hey, like you should be, um, to, we should be together, right? We mm -hmm. should be working together um, to, um, it says, it's part of the Christian life. Go ahead. Yeah, it kind of feels like, well, you know, for one, we're bearing each other's burdens. Mm -hmm. You know, and two, that, I think that's part of helping keep each other accountable, you know, because it says, you who are spiritual should restore him, restore him in the spirit of gentleness, you know, and that's kind right. of accountability in a sense, yep. you know, hey, mm -hmm. you know, whenever you do something wrong or whatever, you know, yeah, we, we need to be more gentle about how we approach this. You know, you might be upset and you might be mad, but you don't need to be so aggressive in your tone or, right. or how you speak, you know, because be careful. You don't want to speak words of venom, you right. know, because words can kill. You know, let's speak words of kindness and love and let's try to solve this problem out. You know, so yeah. there's, you know, there's so many different ways that this is applied to how important, you know, fellowship is. And Yep. And it's and, also that account of it like discipleship. And mm -hmm. it's kind of it's saying like those of you who are more spiritually mature, like, right. So you should, um, you know. If there, somebody is caught in transgression, like you should be able to, the, your goal is to is reconciliation. Yes. So you want to you want to handle this with a spirit of gentleness, right? Anything, any type of sin that's been, Jesus is, you know, it's a brother. Um, so that Jesus Christ has already died for this sin, and He's died for all of yours as well. So we should be have that spirit of just wanting to gently restore them, and that's where that uh, restoration comes into. So it's just being saying being very mindful. Um, That's really you cool. want to read the next verse? It's yes. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And this is a big passage about, um, hey, it's like, well, I'm saved now. And maybe the local church has let me down in the past. Like, I can just be at home and, like, watch a pastor on here. I mean, hey, maybe God used this to save me. So why can't I just do this at home? Mm -hmm. What does God say to that? And, uh, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to, not neglecting to meet together, as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. I really love this because this makes you think about the time that 
Patrick came to my house. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't let me fall into the habit of being at home. Right. You know, he, you know, he didn't, it was kind of like, hey, you're neglecting your your job as a Christian or, or your faith as a Christian right. to come and fellowship with us. And we, you know, it yeah. kind of pulls back to the last verse we just read too, you know, with, with gentleness and love. Yeah. He, yeah. Which he Patrick brought me does back so to well. the church. Oh, yeah. he's yeah. amazing. Um, you know, stirring up love and good works. I mean, these are all so many different ways that the, that the community for me personally has affected me, you know, yeah. bringing, you know, inviting me over and, Constantly bring encouragement to me and my family to, to be in fellowship is, you know, definitely the definition of what this verse has brought to me and my family, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's a it's a great picture of, like, um, God kind of understanding and knowing that we would need clear, um, clear commands to say, no, um, they're going to be tempted to not join together because... You know, either because human, like we fail each other all the time, and mm -hmm. it's also much easier not to have to be confronted or have to need accountability or people to really know you. You could just kind of recluse, but God is saying, no, like let's make sure that you're meeting together. Um, mm -hmm. This is a command. Um, it's 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 for your good and to and stir each other up to pursuing my righteousness and my kingdom and pursuing t and knowing me and praying to me and um, because that's where we'll be most fulfilled. Um, I think we've done a good job, uh, and I think we can probably do a part two on this, mm -hmm. where we dive into, um, I got um, Pastor Jeffrey Johnson at Grace Bible Church, who has a really good, um, he, he has a really good segment on um, the local church, and I think it'll be really useful for us to watch this over the next week, and we can take our own notes and kind of talk about it, okay. um, and then we'll, we'll have some to share um, for the next episode next week. Sound that good? sounds awesome. Yeah, right, I love it.